Hello, my name is Teresa. I love traveling with Le Mat. My first stop in Italy is Borgo Colotti, which is about an hour away from Perugia. I arrive late in the evening. After a long and seemingly endless drive through the dark woods, I feel quite lost. Suddenly an illuminated dome appears in the distance. And right in front of me is the observatory of Colotti. It is amazing that here of all places there is such a device with which one can look into the darkness. Later I realize that by braving the darkness, my initial fears and worries of what might occur on my journey into the unknown have vanished. Ciao, ben arrivati. Just then Franco and Anna walk towards me. Finally they open the doorway to my dwelling in Colotti. Allora, siamo a Borgo Colotti. Borgo Colotti ha una storia antica, il primo impianto è dell'anno 1000. Franco tells me a bit about Colotti. Its foundation stone was laid in about 1000 AD and the San Lorenzo church was already mentioned in 1300 AD. Originally, Colotti was a military fortress built for control of the valley. It then became a farm until the 1960s. On Saturdays, the villagers all met at the barber shop, bought salt and cigarettes. It was here that they chatted together and celebrated many a feast. Il sabato tagliavano i capelli, vendevano le sigarette e il sale e nella casa della torre c'era il fienile, facevano delle feste e quindi tutti gli abitanti della valle arrivavano qui. At the beginning of the 1970s, the village was abandoned. Franco and Anna took it over in 2000 and tried to continue the feeling of living in a middle-aged village. Ricrea normalmente ognuno per il suo pezzo la vita di un piccolo paesino antico in una valle, in una foresta sperduta nel bosco. One day, as I was walking along the bank of the river Carpina, we found a moon-like landscape made of a silver-grey clay, known there as Jenga. The pieces of clay crumbled through my fingers. A thousand games could be played with it. Maybe that's why the moon is so changeable. During the first few days, I am the only person staying there, but Anna and Franco often have friends visiting them. They are preparing the village for a group of tourists that have booked for the weekend. The garden is so magnificent. One evening, Anna describes the stars and the planets, and then we look at the heavenly bodies through the telescope. I cannot get enough of the spectacle. In 
In and around Kolotti there is so much of interest to explore. One evening I visit the Palazzo dell'Angelo de Rossi in Città di Castello. It is a very memorable evening because at the gates of the palace I am received by the cruel lady Angela herself who is back from the past to tell her terrible story. In the magical palace gardens, the shadows of the ancient residents are dancing. It seems to me that they are trying to reveal their long forgotten secrets. Filled with curiosity and anticipation, I decide that the following day I am going to go on another journey of exploration through the Città di Castello. Perhaps I will manage to unveil many more secrets of this unusual place. Feeling adventurous and daring, I am led into the underground tunnels and passageways, hoping to find the most coveted treasure. In the sandstone walls, we find symbols of animals, coats of arms and much more. Thanks to Lamat, I can now truly say that I have learned a great deal about Città di Castello. On Saturday I leave Colorti full of sadness. However, I feel rested and excited to discover more about Umbria with Lamat. <laughs> 